Well, you know what I heard. <laughs> I think God and Moses both just have enormous respect for each other. Come live with me. What gladiator has that same right to spare? Look, the judges are wrong. Even the Egyptian judge is impressed. Until recently, you claimed that the Earth revolved around the sun. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. Perhaps it's a sign of the times, but people today always misuse the term Renaissance man. They apply it to anyone who has more than one skill. The actor who can play an instrument or the computer programmer who's written a science fiction novel. Oh look, Junior can walk and talk. What it should mean is a person who has achieved real greatness in a wide range of different disciplines. Someone like, well, the original Renaissance man, Leonardo da Vinci. Leo painted, he sculpted, he wrote, he sliced, he diced, he was a draftsman, a defense contractor, an engineer, and an architect. He could even do you a nice patio. So let's go back to 1483 and get a first-hand look at this multi-talented guy. Now, where would you find the ultimate Renaissance man? Probably right alongside the ultimate Renaissance woman on television. Hello, I'm Martha, and I'm a good thing. I'm here this week at the fabulous home of one of the richest nobles in Italy, the Duke of Sforza. The Duke is the unpatronizing patron of my very dear friend, Leonardo da Vinci. Hello, Leo. Oh, hi. It's great to have you here, Maria. Martha. Oh. Well, perhaps you can tell us a bit about what you do for your patron, the Duke. Sure. It's not just oil paintings, is it? Oh, no, I do oil paintings as well, but, you know, I also do architecture, sculpting, house paintings, as well as fortifications and war machines, because you know what? War machines pay the bills, boys and girls. I know exactly what it's like. With all the nobles away at war in the morning, I'm boiling oil for dinner, and later in the day, I'll probably end up dumping it over some attacking army or angry investors storming my home. Yes. Okay, now speaking of attacking, I want to show you something. Look. Oh, I love this. It yeah. looks like some sort of covered gazebo. You know, that's exactly how it started out. You know, the Duke wanted a place in the garden with benches where intellectuals could discuss Renaissance philosophy. Then I thought, you know what, this shape, you know, put some wheels on it and voila, you've got a fabulous war machine. Mm, sort of like a warship for the land. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. And I see you have guns sticking out all around. Guns to blast them, wheels to crush them. <laughs> There's some sort of battering ram here. Uh, no, no, that's actually a bench to discuss Renaissance philosophy. Uh, I'll pick Gary Shandino to block, please. Okay, Gary, and I hear you just started a new job. Uh, that's right. I'm uh, working as a jester with the uh, Sforza family right now uh, up in Milan. Yeah, thank you. We wish you the best of luck with that. Here's the question. What thing in an artist studio is worth more than gold? Oh, more than gold, huh? Well, uh, that's uh, probably the artist's ego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, seriously, uh, I'm going to say it's one of the blue paints they use because, you know, those blue paints can be worth a fortune. So I say uh, it's azurite. I'm going to agree. Oh, so close. It's a blue pigment. But the actual answer is ultramarine, the blue they use to paint the Virgin Mary's cloak. You know, I always say, when you're, when you're building a war machine, oh, damn, you should always start with the steering mechanism. There. You know what? We can do this later. Uh, let me show you the garden I'm making. The Duke of Sforza's estate is spacious and beautiful, so nearly as beautiful as my own, in fact. This would make a fabulous moat. Oh, yeah. Moat there, earthworks over there, uh, and we've got a hard road going to come right through here for moving cannons. Defenses are always changing, and you've got to keep them guessing. And a road really is the perfect thing for a noble on a budget to really stretch his cannons. Mm, I love cannons. Oh. Try putting them on a perimeter wall. They make a really strong statement. The Renaissance was a time of tremendous innovation. Artists were experimenting with new painting techniques. Doctors were learning about the human body by studying corpses. 
and some people were doing both. Well, repairing the clocks, which gave me an idea for planning a pageant, and then I also used it when I was planning that bronze statue, which, well, you know, I have to finish, or well, we'll start, actually. <laughs> right, but getting back to painting Leonardo, right. there's nothing more embarrassing than commissioning a portrait and finding out that the proportions have come out all wrong. Tell it, yeah. And before you got onto botany and flying Leonardo, you were saying that before you paint, you spend a lot of time studying the human form. Exactly, yeah. Now, I like to study men as they bathe or just stand naked. Woo! Who doesn't, huh? <laughs> but, you know, I also like to cut up human bodies, and, and, and then I, I draw what I see. It's a real slice of life. But it's quite difficult finding the bodies, isn't it? Boy, you've been reading my mind. Or my notebooks. <laughs> well, you know, actually, nobody can read my notebooks because of my secret writing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, oh, no. Like Copernicus and Galileo, many of da Vinci's ideas were revolutionary. Now, today, revolutionary ideas could earn you a Nobel Prize. In the 15th century, they could get you imprisoned or burned at the stake. Since a lot of Leonardo's ideas were so cutting edge they could have been considered dangerous, he wrote his notes in a secret code. Ixne on the heresy hay. <laughs> okay, you see that? You see that? You see how, how cunningly disguised the writing is? You mm. see that? See, that's a secret method I've developed so that no one can read it. <laughs> Unless they used a mirror, perhaps. Well, yeah, yeah. you see? Yeah, a mirror, a mirror, a mirror would, of course, make it less There's difficult, so but I... Help! Run! Vinci's designs have come to life! Oh, no! Kayoka, Kayoka, we're being attacked! Mikachu, Phew Phew, attacked by who? We don't know! Come and see, Kayoka! It's an army of strange machines! I summon the power of alchemy! Alakazam, alchemy! Remember what you said about those crazy war machines Da Vinci designed? I said they were too advanced and couldn't be built because his instructions were illegible. Just gibberish. He drew flying machines and tanks, but his notes were just the nonsense scrawlings of a mad scribbler. Whoa! The secret code of a clever genius. His notes can be read in a mirror, and they're in a secret shorthand. Of course, a code, so no one could accuse him of writing heresy. The left-handed devil. Oh dear, Da Vinci's drawings came alive! Yes, we'd better run! Yeah, Da Vinci also drew dead bodies. Uh? Once in a lifetime comes a songwriter who captures the sound of an era, and Gordon Slicefoot was the greatest of them all. He sang about human dissection, and his songs cut to the bone. Every highway man, let me snip away, snip away at you. Now you can own 20 hits by this country's greatest vivisectionist minstrel. It's all right for some, but not all right for me. When the body that you're cutting moves around. I, I've also used a shorthand. Mm. A short, oh, oh, speaking of shorthands, you know, I love to draw hands, but they're very difficult. So you know what I do? I dissect them. <laughs> come on, come on. I've got some hands right over here. Now, in dissecting, freshness is important, isn't it, Leonardo? Martha, I start with the freshest corpses I can find. You know, I try the hospital, or, boy, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but grave robbers. And also there's dead bodies now and then at the gals or, you know, at the public stocks. Now, I've had a lot of trouble with public stocks. Well, the problem with execution victims is that the medical schools get the fresh pickings. <laughs> well, Leonardo, when I want to get the freshest corpses I can find, I know I can rely on my loyal servant, Pietro. Pietro. Yeah. Hi, Pietro. I've heard great things about you. Whoa, that's fresh. <laughs> Remember. I can see her in her coffin in a satin dress. She's been buried six feet under, but I couldn't care less. The sun's down. I better take care. Because I have to steal her body from that graveyard there. Gordon's musical legacy poignant and anatomically correct, has inspired artists and doctors. Now all that knowledge is gathered in one great set of songs that will touch your heart and then cut it open to see what's inside. I can see veins in your eyes, I found a brand new muscle in your lips. I can see your fingers move whenever I pull the tendons like this. You, you think hands are complicated on the outside, look. Look on the inside. Mm. <laughs>
Now I must say that as an artist, dissections really give me a sense of how the whole thing is put together. This collection includes his poignant and prophetic masterpiece. That's what I get for surgery. The local spear anatomy. I'm caught and swinging on a noose. When I'm dead, they'll cut me loose. And then they'll start dissecting me. You know, hands are really difficult. That's why, uh, that's why I like to study the, the skeleton and, and the musculature and, uh, you know, the way the, the folds of skin go. And do you use the rule of fives? I don't know that one. I discovered this rule myself when I was under Verrocchio. Hey, I studied under Verrocchio too for years! Oh, I wasn't studying, just under him. But I did think of this wonderful rule for drawing fingers. You start drawing fingers and then you count as you go. Right. Until you get to five and then you stop. It gives you a very natural looking hand when you draw five fingers. Uh, four fingers and a thumb actually. When we return, Aeronautics and aquanautics, and armaments, and architecture, chemistry, physics, anatomy, biology, alchemy, and more. Let me snip away, snip away at you. Leonardo was a great one for pulling different disciplines together. He carried out experiments with different mixtures of paints. He studied the mathematics of perspective, and he was interested in the links between geometry and beauty. Talk about painting by numbers. Leonardo is fascinated by the relationship between art and mathematics. This is also an interest of mine, the way that the artist can transform paint, wood, and canvas into hundreds or even thousands of gold ducats. Which is how architecture led me to look at ways of improving stage lighting inside theaters using right. just the... Getting back to mathematics and your study of art. Oh, oh right, yeah, well, nature's all about math. I mean, look. Oh, look, look, look. Take a look at this sketch here, you know? You'll see the link between geometry and anatomy. Mm, what a wonderful design. I yeah. love the use of proportions here, which almost remind me of the ideas of the Roman architect Vitruvius. What? Hey, that's what I said before we were on camera. Is there a message in this picture, Leonardo? Well, maybe a guy can be well-rounded and still a bit of a square. <laughs> Okay, now if this doesn't work as a catapult, I can use it for scaffolding for the Last Supper. Oh, say supper, are you hungry for supper? Because I've got some great recipes for some lovely food. Oh, you know, Experts agree, breast milk is best for baby. And they agree, a woman who is breastfeeding should refrain from sexual activity. So, like most new fathers, you'll want to pack your newborn off to a wet nurse as fast as you can. But choose your wet nurse carefully because breast milk not only carries the nutrients that growing babies need, it also transmits the physical and moral traits of the donor. Hire a loose woman, and your child may swallow a wanton lifestyle. That's what I did. I painted the dragon on the shield, <laughs> and my father was just scared to death because he yeah. thought that it was a real dragon. You know, know what... I'm going to interrupt you here because you made an interesting point earlier. Uh, what was your original point? Uh, my underwater suit? No, before that. So my, my book of fables? No, something about how you love animals. Oh, I love to draw horses. No, no, love it was something horses. about how you like to go to the marketplace and yeah. buy pigeons that are being sold for food and then just release Yeah, them. I'd like to release yes. them just to watch them fly free. You know what? I designed a machine that would fly. Yes, it's so interesting. Don't lie to me, Raymond. I saw you dancing in the street with another woman. Okay, okay. You, you want to know why I was dancing with her? We were dancing. I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, the, it was the Tarantella. The, taran the, the Tarantella. Oh, my God. You mean the, the spider dance? Yeah. You got bitten by one of those poisonous Italian tarantula spiders? Yeah, 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 that's it. Oh, God, I've heard about that. You get bitten, and then the poison, it, it makes you dance. And, it's horrible. Well, well, did you take anything for it? I could mix up some fairy hack. I, I, have, I have vipers flesh in the cupboard. No, uh, rue leaves. Those are very good against poison. No, no, no. You see, that, see that, that's exactly what, what, what she was giving me. You see, she, she saw that I'd been bitten, and so she was giving me some rue leaves, yeah. The perfect anecdote for poisons. Yeah, but see, she didn't notice that, 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 that the spider was still there, and so 
it bit her too. I thought that you and that woman were, were making the beast with two backs. Uh, no, 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 no. Hey, we were making the beast with eight legs. Yeah. Now I've added pheasant and rabbit and venison to my vegetarian pie, and the rich juices oozing from the flesh really enhance the flavor of the vegetables. While we waited for the pies to cook, Leonardo, who never sits still, as you can imagine, showed me some of his newest artistic creations. And I see you've drawn some horses here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I love horses. They've got such sensitive eyes, don't they? You know what, Martha? You cannot create a sensitive work of art if you are not sensitive to animals. Can't be done. Can't be done. It looks like they're pulling some sort of horse-drawn mower here. Oh, oh, that's close. Do you know what that is? It's an assault chariot, right? You see all those blades they whirl around that cut off the enemy's arms and legs and stuff? Chop, 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 chop. Oh, here, you know what? Let me just draw some limbless bodies in here. And, and they're flailing around in agony, and, and they're twitching their... <laughs> twitching their severed muscles right in there. I find victims add so much to a drawing. Yeah, and, and look at this horse, look at this horse. Doesn't he have sad eyes? Aren't they so sad? You know what? You could see this horse trotting behind the crucifixion, huh? Or, or the martyrdom of Saint Sebastian, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, oh my God, okay, okay. <laughs> Saint Sebastian was there, right? And he's got all the arrows sticking out of him and he's in total agony, right? And all of a sudden he sees this horse pulling this great big chopping machine coming towards him and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, it's a chopping machine! <laughs> Right. Uh, hey, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it right now on the empty wall on the chapel. Come on, let's go. Come on. Talent and genius made da Vinci famous. His political savvy made him successful. You see, Leonardo was also a genius at finding funding. Yes, his imagination soared, but his feet were on the ground and ready to walk away. Like today's free agent sports heroes, Renaissance artists and engineers were always looking for bigger bucks and a better position with another prince in another city. And Leo played ball for some of the top teams in Italy. Show me the money. Uh, who, who's paying for these sketches anyway? I mean, is, is the production paying? I mean, first the patron, then the paint. That's what I say, you know, because art's art, but you gotta eat. You know, Peg, I could be as famous as Da Vinci, but I don't know what to paint. Sorry, Peg. Da Vinci's already painted plenty of horse faces. Well, I hear Da Vinci doesn't like girls. Why not paint me in the nude? I don't have a brush big enough. I need a patron. Sure. Sure, Al. You just need a little patron. Hey, don't patronize me, Peg. I need a patron to pay me to paint his family. Or better still, his mistress. You see, that way, I can create an artistic legacy for the ages and stare at a naked babe. <laughs> uh, that's it, I'm gonna find the richest guy in town and say, if you pay me 500 bucks, I'll paint your mistress. Really? I thought you didn't want to paint me. You see the way the water reflects the sunlight? Mm, it just kind of yes. goes up. Oh, hydraulics. Hydraulics? Hydra you know, we could, we could pump the moat dry and... Coming up, we'll focus on Leonardo's inability to focus. Oh look, cows! Cause I have to steal her body from that graveyard there. Today there are some people who believe that Leonardo da Vinci's lack of focus was the result of attention deficit disorder. Interesting idea. People with ADD find it easy to start something but difficult to stick with it and finish it. And for every completed masterpiece like the Mona Lisa, Leonardo left dozens of unfinished canvases. There were always other little projects to distract him. You know, so say you're a bishop or something and you really like to have a portrait of your mistress painted. Mm -hmm. You can get the church to pay for it if you have your mistress portrayed as a biblical character. So that's a little money saving tip. Right, but what now? Okay, well, you just mix in some of this wonderful Ethiopian wool. Oh, and I just love that. Just feel that. It's so soft. Mm, I just love Ethiopian wool. Me too. Now you add uh, the frankincense. Just That's like it. they gave the baby Jesus. That's right, the very same. And mm -hmm. mix it up and voila! And it's finished. There you have it. Greek fire a la Leonardo. Mm -hmm. And you know, Martha, this, you can light this, you can hurl it at a ship, mm -hmm. it'll stick to the wood, the sails, and even if the ship goes underwater, Greek fire just keeps going and going and going. You know, speaking of underwater, God, I wonder if I could build a submarine. And I imagine this Greek fire would stick to sailors as well. Oh, that's right, yes. Hello and goodbye, sailor. <laughs> Talk about your jack tar. <laughs> <laughs>
Did I ever tell you how sensitive I am about animals? Yes. You know? I would like to go draw some animals right now. Let's go back to the studio. Come on, come on. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire one shot or only zero? Did he remember to put in the wadding so the musket ball would stay in place? Is his gunpowder damp? Has rain fallen in the flash pan? Has his gun's wick gone out? Is it too windy to ignite? And if he does fire it, can he hit a man-sized target at two yards? But being as this is a 75 Arquebus, the most powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, given the odds, you probably do. Okay, this is another flying machine that I, I saw when I, I, you know, I just saw a seed flying. That's what that was. This is the... That could be farm machinery or something. There's a there's a church dome or something like that, and there's oh, uh, an yes. ostrich, and there's oh I think that's a Medusa. <laughs> oh no, that's the drawing you did of me earlier uh, today. Oh my gosh! Right? Yeah, right. Well, you know, I haven't I haven't decided whether I'm going to use blue in that painting or not. I'll decide that when I do the actual painting. <gasps> Painting, painting, you know what? I just forgot that I haven't finished the Adoration of the Magi at, at the monastery at Santa Ana Oh my God, that's so, You know what, I was gonna put a camel in there because you know, camels have got such expressive lips, they're just incredible. They're just so great for an adoring painting, you know what I mean? You, you have a reputation, don't you, for not finishing the works you begin. Oh, me culpa, me culpa, that's right. Like the altarpiece for the St. Bernard Chapel at the Palazzo della Signoria. Right, right, let's go do that now, come on! <laughs> Leo, I must say, there's always something interesting just around the corner. Oh, yeah, that's so me, you know. I, I start someplace, I get itchy feet, and then I'm off to find a new patron. I came, I saw, I left the fresco unfinished. Veni, vidi, vinci. Oh, oh my God, that's so hilarious! I'm gonna put you in my notebook. I'm gonna, where's my mirror? You know what? I could invent a new mirror. Here. Yeah. In the Renaissance, Leonardo was treated with admiration. Today, he probably would have been treated with Ritalin, but then maybe he would have finished something. Unfortunately, no matter how much we admire da Vinci, the fact is today, most progress comes from highly focused specialists. Recent history has been shaped by those whose knowledge goes narrow and deep. And for the Renaissance man, history bites. Yes, I think the pies may be cool enough to eat now. See, this flying machine will carry four or five people. I like to design flying machines that can carry a hundred people at once. Yeah, well, this one will travel as fast as the wind, and it's powered by a hand-cranked engine. It's right there, see? Mine is, will travel as fast as thought and is powered by six strong griffins. Well, yeah, mine's still in the planning stage. It's probably six months to completion. A lot of technical difficulties. Mine is decades away from completion, and the technical problems are insurmountable. 